I played football, uh, soccer, I guess, from the age of probably three years old till now. I currently still play um, just kind of, you know, more so for fun. Um, but, you know, I, I started coaching. My dad's an academy coach as well. Um, so he coaches at an academy here in Edmonton, uh, Edmonton, Canada. And from there, I mean, I was helping him from about the age of 12, 13, 14. So I've been coaching for about, you know, seven, eight years, even before I started the business. And it was actually funny. It was kind of during that COVID time, you know, a lot of people kind of figuring out what they wanted to do. I, myself, I was playing in Europe football. Um, and then I was trying kind of on, you know, the fence about what I wanted to do. And I was on FaceTime with one of my old friends who was based somewhere else. Um, and he'd mentioned that he was after the call, he was going to coach some kids in a private session. And then he said, Hey, like Fran, like you should think about, you should think about coaching. Like, I think you'd be, you'd suit it perfectly. Um, so really then from there, I got the idea kind of in my head um, just for fun. I kind of made up a website and, you know, kind of toss some things back and forth. I have a background also in kinesiology. Um, so, you know, biomechanics and movements and stuff like that from through university. Um, and then I kind of linked the two together and thought, you know what, I might as well give this kind of a go. So created the website, you know, put together a social media page. It took me about five to six months to totally kind of put myself out there and do it. Um, but I guess long story short, that's kind of how I got into the business of the private sector in terms of soccer training. That's perfect. So tell us a bit about what, what your business is called and what you guys specialize in. Yeah, so it's SAP Training Systems, uh, Soccer and Performance Training Systems is kind of what it stands for, as well to play on my name. My name is Francesco Saparito, um, so kind of put two and two together. Um, and we specialize in private football or soccer training. Um, so it's all focused on individual player development. Yeah. Um, so providing the skills and the techniques necessary um, to complement the team training and team games that players go to with their clubs or their academies. Um, and we specialize in one-on-one -on -one and semi-private training. So whether there's a group of players that come to us for sessions um, and train together, um, as well as camps and clinics, which again, are all focused. The whole total training focus is that individual um, player development, right? So it gives the gives the players uh, a different type of platform where they can come out. They don't have to worry about, you know, their club coaches making decisions if they're playing on the weekend. Uh, they're free to learn, you know, the new techniques and skills that we teach them implement them, learn from their mistakes, and then hopefully at some point be able to implement them in their team training and games so that, you know, it creates success for them as a player. That's nice. So uh, how long have you been running your business? So I guess, you know, with the COVID type thing, I mean, it was during COVID of 2021 at the beginning um, was where kind of the idea started going. And then I'd say we kind of got more, I got more into full coaching probably April or May it was May of 2021. So it's been about almost two and a half. It's been two and a half years now. So amazing. Amazing what the what the pandemic has done. Because it yeah. So many businesses were created as a result of it. Um that's nice. So what's what's been your your biggest obstacles that you've been you've faced since you started the business? I think there's been a lot, but actually it's funny enough. I think present. I have the, you know, the beautiful problem of actually having too many players or too many individual parties looking for training from me personally, mm -hmm. um, which is a great problem to have. Uh, but now it's figuring out ways of distributing the work, whether it's on the field. So it's, you know, hiring of new coaches yeah. and distributing those responsibilities to someone else that is just as high of a caliber of training as I I'm able to provide personally um, that I pride myself in. So there's that as well as hiring of different other types of responsibilities off the field, I guess. So such as, you know, social media stuff, um, email marketing campaigns, you know, that kind of stuff, which, you know, right now for the most part, I wear all the hats, but I'm just in the process now of hiring a new coach, mm -hmm. um, which is, which has started. And it's actually gone really well, but that's probably been the biggest obstacle actually I faced so far is trying the best of finding the best way of expanding the business so that it's not just me, my name, my head wearing wearing the yeah. same all the hats yeah. and being able to, and as I said, kind of distribute the work so that it's just as high of a quality as if I was doing it. Nice. So, how how many kids do you guys train, or do you train on a weekly basis? So our audience get a feel of 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 your business, how how big it is. 
Yeah. So on a, on a, I say on a semi-regular basis, and that's where I see, you see players at least two to three times a month, usually mm-hmm. twice a month as we, we consider, you know, regular to an extent. Yeah. Um, we see 44 players who are on packages or subscriptions. Um, mm-hmm. Um, again, in a private and semi-private environment. So again, that's either one coach, one player, um, up to six players and one coach at a time. Nice. So that's on like a semi-regular basis. And then over the last 12 months, or I guess since last, more so since last December, um, we've had 254 players uh, attend camps or clinics. Wow. Um, and those, cause those can include players who are also, because a lot of the players mm-hmm. who take part in the private sector of our of our of our business um yeah. will attend the camps so those numbers can be included in that but yeah there was 254 players in the camps and clinics over the last 12 months as well that's amazing so obviously a lot of coaches want that problem that you have of too many players so tell us a little bit how how did you get to the point where you're in that position that you're having a, lo- a lot of players what can you share with us a couple of strategies or tips that other coaches can implement to get to where you are currently yeah i think i think one of the biggest things is one it's my passion for the sport um so i love football soccer i watch it on a weekly basis um i play still even myself again it's just you know a fun type league in a sense mm-hmm. still fairly competitive um but i play but again it's just that passion for the sport you know my I've, I've been playing football, as I mentioned, since I was about three years old. Yeah. Uh, um, and I think that's first and foremost, I think th- people see the passion I have for the sports when I coach, um, as well as like the why in terms of, you know, at the same time, you know, my, as I mentioned, my buddy told me to start coaching and introduced me to the idea, Yeah. but then it kind of developed into the idea of being able to give players the opportunities or be able to provide them with a platform to earn the opportunities to go out and play football in a mm-hmm. different environment and learn the life skills. And, you know, cause for me personally, you know, I moved away at 14 to play per, for a professional Academy. Yeah. Um, I moved from Edmonton where we are about an hour's flight away to Vancouver, BC, Canada to play for the Vancouver Whitecaps MLS pro Academy. And then during that time I was able to play for the Canadian national team at a youth level. I then was able to go to the U S and play, uh, and with the Canadian national team and the Whitecaps, we would compete in different areas of the country, in the mm-hmm. U.S., in Canada. We would travel to Mexico, to Europe, uh, to South America to play in competitions and play against different types of players. Um, and then, as I said, I met I, I was lucky enough to earn a full ride scholarship as well to a U.S. college and play for four years, then play. Mm-hmm. Pro- so, again, all these kind of experiences that I had yeah. is what put, turned me into the player or the person I should say I am today. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think I'm super, super, super fortunate that I was given the basis when I was young to have the skills to go and do that. But then again, it's being able to learn and experience all the different types of things and new meet new people, develop relationships that I still have today. So like all my best friends, I came from football Mm -hmm. Um, and all the best memories I have, 90% of the best memories I have probably again are related to something involving football and soccer. Right. Mm -hmm. So again, it's being able to, whenever I coach, I do my best to be able to share one, the passion, but also to, you know, again, tell the, give the players the sense what football could bring you, yep. what, you know, being good at a sports can help you learn what all that kind of stuff. And I, I think that's a couple of the things that's helped me. That's definitely one of the biggest things that's helped me get to the point I am today is just being able to share the passion. And then also too, as I mentioned, like, you know, I watch a lot of football. I do a lot of football type education too. Mm-hmm. Um, so being able to, you know, implement the things that I've learned. I think my coaching is a lot different than what a lot of other coaches in our area will be able to provide. Since I've had, mm-hmm. but also because of, um, you know, the education I have and and you know my willingness to learn and my openness to learn all the time, right? Mm-hmm. So I would say those are two of the biggest things for sure that's helped me get to this kind of place that I'm at. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. That's that's. Amazing. Uh, and also, you've made a really good point when you mentioned the word experience, because I speak to a lot of coaches that want to start a business, but they don't have that coaching experience. They've probably gone onto Instagram, seen that it's something cool to start, and they just want to jump into it. So talk to us a little bit about what the importance of being experienced or 
you know, working, playing at different levels, how important that is to then being able to run a business full time. Yeah, I think you like, I think like you mentioned, Leo, I think like you said, a lot of players, I don't think being able to go into coaching and be a good coach comes from just being, just playing the game. Yeah. I think, you, I think personally, even myself, like I have a different type. I have a specific type of, I guess, character and personality mm-hmm. to be able to play and then being able to transfer what I've experienced as a player into coaching for younger players too. Right. And being able to, so you, it's kind of nice because you get, you get a mix of both. You get, you know, I have the experience as assistant coaching and doing coaching myself when I was younger. And then my dad, as I mentioned, is a coach. So I'm able to run, you know, a lot of ideas and stuff off of him. And I've been able to see him mm-hmm. implement his principles and stuff for a long time. Um, and I think I got kind of that character to be able to coach from him as well. That was a big portion of it. Yeah. Um, but again, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big thing of being able to understand when you coach, you have that experience from a younger age and then up till, you know, the age you are now, you're able to implement, like I said, the things you learn to different types of age groups. And then you're able to adapt your coaching style again, from a personal, from a private training sector, you're working with one player up to four players, up to maybe six players. Yeah. different ages, different skill levels and being able to adapt and be flexible so that each player that, that, that attends your training um, gets the, the specific type of training they need, I think is a really hard skill to learn. And mm-hmm. even myself, I'm definitely still learning that skill now, but being able to coach and train, you know, a nine-year-old versus coaching a 20-year-old who's in university is much different and being able to, yeah. you know, having been in both of their shoes again, being nine years old was a little bit longer ago than I, than 20 years old. Um, But again, being able to put yourself almost in their shoes, think about, you know, maybe a little bit how they're, how they're thinking, Mm -hmm. thinking about the skills and techniques they need at that age versus maybe a 20 year old's age, that kind of thing. I think that's one of the biggest skills that I've developed and and I'm still learning today. Um, But that's definitely something that's, that's, you know, important. Um, and again, as I mentioned too, I have, you know, a background in, in, in movements, mm-hmm. uh, with my kinesiology degree. I'm also a certified athletic development specialist. So it's actually a, a certification that allows you to work with youth from the ages of two up to 17. Yeah. And it's that to that certification, I think played a big role too, in me learning not only, you know, the things you need to do as a coach, but also how to approach training with those younger generations and the younger kids and being able to explain things a specific way. And again, I think it just comes with one education, but also learning the process too, and be open to learning and being flexible and being patient with yourself, as well as I think with the players. Awesome. I can see the passion in you. <laughs> so <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that's a compliment. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> so Obviously, we've talked a lot about the coaching side, which is obviously important in this type of industry. But then talk to us a little bit about the business side, right? Because, again, a lot of coaches think that, oh, I'm a great coach, so that means I'm going to have a a great business. But the reality is you can be a really good coach, but you have to understand the business side. So how did you learn the business side? Um, And what are a couple of things that you can you can give the coaches that are watching this video advice on? Well, the first bit of advice I'd be would be to join your guys' program, Mm -hmm. (laughs) make money coaching sports or the sports accelerator community. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that, you know, that's one thing for sure, especially as a new coach, something I wish I come across almost a little bit earlier, because I think there's a lot of really valuable business side of things that you guys provide. um, That has definitely helped me even, you know, I've been, like I mentioned earlier um, before, even the call I've been I've been in the program for about six ish months just under six months I think but there's a lot of value in the community there's a lot of value in the education you guys provide so that'd be the first thing uh, but I think second too is what I did and I think that helped me a lot was reaching out to a lot of different professionals that are either in the space if you if, if you would or maybe in like a slightly different type of private sector space so for example like when I was reaching out to different types of people um, I was reaching out to people who are owning businesses such as like a landscaping company, someone who owned a hairdressing company, someone who was a physiotherapist in the private sector, that kind of thing. Yeah. And I reached out to a whole bunch of different individuals, try to chat to them, someone who owned like a restaurant, you know, I had, you know, different friends in different industries, mm-hmm. um, and just kind of get a sense of, cause again, 
the end of the day, you know, although it might be, they might be different services. I think the business side of things to an extent still apply um, to the business. We, the business I run. Um, so those would be the two biggest pieces of information I give is join the community, get involved with the classroom because you guys break down things like the insurance, the banking lead generation really well, regardless, I think of what level your business is at. Mm. Um, but also reach out to different types of professionals who might be in different industries and how they, you know, handle the business side of things, I guess, too. Nice. So tell us a bit about your experience in the Sports Accelerator program, because there's a lot of coaches that are watching. They hear me, Ben, talk about it all the time and they're maybe on the fence. They're like, yeah, I don't think this is going to work. This is a scam. Blah, blah, blah. So tell us a bit about your experience and how it's helped you to grow and scale the business. Yeah, I think, you know, as I mentioned, even before, I think in terms of education, firstly, you guys provide a lot of great things, as I mentioned, you know, looking for insurance, how to organize your banking, how to generate leads, um, different things like that. There's a whole bunch of different things, how to, you know, run promotions, how to handle maybe social media, how to, as I mentioned, as I'm doing now, you know, generating the steps and the direction you need to hire someone. So I think that's the first thing that that's really great about. I think the second thing is, you know, at the beginning, before I joined the community, I was always looking for people who were in the private sector space and being able to relay ideas off of them or be able to communicate with them about different things. But now you have, you know, one place that you can put stuff in um, and write stuff out, such as questions or, you know, successes or challenges you're having. And pe a lot of you have all the people in there who are, at some point, someone has probably went through the exact same experience that I'm, you know, looking to learn from now, right? So it just provides a big platform and a community, as we've said, um, that gives people like me the opportunity to put out, you know, ideas I have and what's in my mind and be able to have people I know that aren't going to be judgmental, aren't going to accept and are going to be able to relate, I guess, to the thoughts and the ideas and the things that I have in my head that I put out there. Right. Again, it's, and then it's also too, you know, it's a great, you know, you'll post something in there and you'll get likes and you'll get comments and people who are trying to again, go out of their way to help you. So I think majority of the coaches who are in this community are looking to improve. They're looking to help others improve because they again, know the spots that others have maybe been in prior to, because they've probably had the same experiences as you've had. Right. Um, so I think those are two of the biggest things that I've taken away from the community. That's awesome. So for anyone that's not in Canada at the moment, what, what's your opinion or where do you see the private training industry going, especially in, in Canada? In well, I think in Canada, five years? yeah, I think in Canada, um, it'll only improve. I think us as a nation, you know, we have made good strides in terms of, you know, our football um, especially recently, you know, we qualified for the men's world cup. The woman won the Olympics a couple summers ago. Um, we're hosting joints with Mexico and the U S the world cup in 2026. Yeah. Um, I think people will only recognize that the private training sector, um, is a, is beneficial for the players. Um, I think, you know, again, the clubs and the academies and the teams, they do really, really great things. Um, but being able to, take a step back and focus on your individual development as a player i think people are recognizing that it's super super important you know for example like how to efficiently attack 1v1 how to defend 1v1 how to take you know how to control the ball out of the air you know being able to have that individual coaching um approach and a coach who's watching to be able to break down the details of actually how to perform those skills how to shoot the ball. That's one of the biggest things I would say that players are missing um, here. What, from what I see is ball striking and shooting the soccer ball, whether it's at goal or to a teammate over a long distance. Right. And I've had players who are, you know, 20, I had, a, I had a friend of mine, she was a pro and she never, she like, she never learned how to properly strike the ball really before we broke down the technique and, you know, from there her shooting improved over a session. And that was it, right? So I think players and people, play, players and parents and coaches are going to recognize how important it is. One because of that, but also two again, even you know outside of Canada, we're we're starting to see a lot of clubs, professional clubs, even hire you know personal trainers, personal coaches to work on the individual player. 
Um, you have players, professional players going out of their way to, again, work with a private trainer to, you know, work on their shooting, work on their ball striking, work on their scanning and awareness, pass and receiving, that kind of stuff, right? Which I think will also transfer to the private sector here and people we'll see right so you have like a mm -hmm. like a club like arsenal from the ages of eight till 12 all they focus on for the, for a lot of the a lot of their development is you know the individual player and how they can improve that individual player to then work into the more tactics and more team related environment later on right so i think just generally you're just going to see it grow you're going to see the popularity increase especially if you get you know coaches who are passionate and you know love the game and really want to give back and help out each individual player and give them the platform mm -hmm. to grow and you know get into it hopefully a better environment than they were in there than where they're in now and progress you know not only as a player but also just being able to progress you know in terms of life too awesome awesome so francesco tell us where do you see your business in the next five years from now you, you know, Leo, I have, uh, I have missions and I have goals and I have the values, but you know, it's funny because if I had looked, you know, two and a half years ago and I had set goals, like those would have been totally like out the way, like I could have goals six months from now and they could be totally different. Right. Um, yeah. but personally for me, you know, if I have to set goals, um, personally, I'd like to have a space that's we're in a great space now, but I'd like to have a, a slightly bigger space where we're able to train, a set more sets of players at a time. So being able to lease a space that's our, our own, mm -hmm. um, especially here in Edmonton, Canada, it's cold for a long period of time and there's a lot of yeah. snow a long time. So being able to have an indoor space, especially um, that's bigger, we're able to have the opportunity to work with more players at a time. Um, I'd hope to have three to four additional coaches that are able to provide training for, you know, again, all the players that are looking for training and have it as high of a caliber as possible um, so that they're able to, again, develop and, you know, progress their game and enjoy the game a little bit more, um, mm -hmm. and be able to coach up to 60 players, I would say weekly, yeah. um, and as well, being able to support, again, I played the college game, the university game, um, in the U S and I think again, that was one of the best decisions I made as a player. You know, I was at a point in my youth career where maybe I wasn't good enough to quite, I wasn't good enough to play pro or to step into the senior game. Um, and I think that the college and university game gave me a good stepping stone to be able to play the game at a good level, progress, mature as a player, as a person, um, earn my degree, and then go on and still be able to play in Europe, which I was lucky enough to be able to play semi-pro and full-time in Europe after that as well, right? And so being able to provide um, players the opportunity to be educated, I guess, about, especially here in Canada, about the university game, whether it's here in Canada, in the U.S., and be able to provide the education players need to know that, you know, it's a good step. This is how you do it. This is how you get recruited. This is how, you know, how you should handle the first year, the fourth year, and maybe what you can look to beyond even that. But that's kind of a couple goals, I guess I have for the business and just as a personal goals, I guess, too, um, to be able to provide players, you know, again, that really good environment and those opportunities. Nice. That's awesome. Perfect. All right. Well, Francesco, thank you for jumping on here, taking the time out to share your journey. Uh, share some really good advice with other coaches who watch the channel. If anyone wants to reach out to you to get your, you know, just to ask you questions, what is the best way they can do that? Uh, I'd say just check out our Instagram page. Uh, that'd be the best one. It's uh, sap.training.systems. Uh, so sap.training.systems is our Instagram. Uh, that'd be the best way usually where you know we're most active in terms of you know chatting with people or posting things or that kind of stuff um so that's where i would say people to look out for or check out our website i guess sap and then training systems.com so perfect okay well thanks again for jumping on and uh hopefully my my intent is to bring you on again in maybe six 12 months time and see uh how how your business has progressed uh from them Oh, awesome. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Thanks, Leo. Awesome. Okay. Well, see you, see you soon and see you in the next one. Awesome. Thanks. Bye.